Hi everybody, my name is Jaden. I'm Eli. I'm Jason. I'm Caden. And we are the Yahoo Tour YouTube channel. And we thank you guys very, very much for hanging out with us. And we are going headstrong into the books of the enlightened ones. And this is a very, very exciting topic. Eli, who are we? What do we believe in? Why do we believe in it? And where does where's our road that we look for for salvation? Um, do we believe that the laws, hedge, and commands of the creator of Yahuwah, because that is his name, he does not have a title like Yahuwah. We believe that the first five books of the Bible are the laws, hedge, and commandments that we should still be following to this day. And we believe in his son, Yahoshua. His name is not Jesus because that is a pagan name, and because there are no J's in Hebrew. And we believe that he is our road of salvation. Okay, we said something about a title of Yahuwah. Did you, you want to catch it? Yeah, uh, I think he said it wrong. He said he shouldn't have a title like God or Lord. His yeah. name is Yahuwah. Did he say it wrong? Yeah, he said he shouldn't have a title of Yahuwah or something. And I don't so, think so. Yeah, we all I kind of like looked. Everyone kind of like looked up a little bit when we were talking about this. Yes, we believe that the laws, statutes, and commandments, which are found in Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, are for all time. They are absolutely for all time. They will bless your house. They will bless your existence. They will bless everything that you do. And it will make your life better. And so that's why we're trying to help you guys make your lives better by helping to find this. Now, one quick thing from a brother Glenn from yesterday, of course. And um, what do you guys think it's on the subject of? Uh, Herod. Yeah, okay. This is our brother Glenn, and he is our uh, walking uh, historian. Okay, King Herod was the son of Antipater, a Roman official who was appointed by the Roman Senate to rule Judea, the Jewish region that included the city of Jerusalem from 37 to 4 BCE. Herod was born in southern, southern Palestine. His father, Antipater, was an Edomite, a, Sem a Semitic people identified by some scholars as Arab, who converted to Judaism in the 2nd century BCE. Antipater was a man of great influence and wealth who increased both by marrying the daughter of a noble from Petra in southwestern Jordan, at that time the capital of the rising Arab Nabataean kingdom. Thus, Herod was, Herod was an Arab origin, was of Arab origin, although he was a practicing Jew. Okay, so that gives us a little bit of... Info on this. All right, and today we are heading into this, and guys, we are we are reading some amazing stuff, stuff you will never find anywhere else. You will not even find this in the, the uh, so-called ordained 66 book version King James. You will not find the words of Messiah quite like this, and so this is absolutely amazing. Every single day when I read this, I read this about 30 minutes before I read this here, just to kind of get it so I don't sound like a, a blubbering idiot when I'm trying to read it. But it's stuff I've never seen before, and the boys at this table have never read this either. And so we're going to do chapter 6. will be a two-part piece of this. So let's go on. Here we go. Before going out among the people to declare himself, Yahushua returned to Gin Sereth, the town of his upbringing, accompanied by his disciples. He went first to the place where his mother was staying. And though she greeted him warmly because she loved her eldest son, Miriam did not fully understand Yahushua. She always knew he would grow up to be different and would become a man of Elohim because when carrying him, she dreamed that a bright flaming star had come down from heaven and entered her womb. That's interesting. I, you know, that's the first thing I want to touch on a little bit is everybody saw the star, right? Everybody saw stars, mm -hmm. stars in Bethlehem, stars, you know, um, that was the thing that people were seeing is that and something that we did not know that we just can glean in this in one sentence is Miriam did not fully understand Yahushua, Right. Right. She knew he was a special guy, but she did not know how special. Okay, two. His own kinsmen had once thought him mad and sought to take control of him. But now his brothers and sisters, having grown up, they are no longer troubled. They no longer troubled him. They had said, he has lost his father and seeks another. For it is written, I will be his father and he will be my son. All right, so we have even more stuff that we've never, ever, ever heard about before. Um, they thought he was a madman. They thought he was crazy, right? Yeah, probably. Well, that's what they said. They did just said that. They thought him mad and sought to take control of him. When people think that you're crazy, they want to try to either save you or try to save you from yourself or, you know, save uh, the, the world from you. So that is something crazy because somewhere in Messiah's life, his own family had to try to take him into like a custody or try to. I didn't understand what he's saying. It probably sounded like a weird thing that like they probably never heard it. It's like saying weird random things like, uh, this is pretty weird, man. What are you saying? Yeah, and they, they took it up because they thought he had lost his father and seeks another. Okay, three. When younger, Yahushua had been overawed by the prospects of the future and often fearful that he might not fulfill the promise. But he overcame this and any fears of his inability. It is in this and his dedication that his greatness 
is revealed. Something more, right? Something more we've never ever heard before. Um, doubt, right? Messiah had doubt. He knew he was something, but he did not know if he was going he was to pray. He wasn't even good enough. Yeah, and I mean that is a that is a human trait right there, right? We all sit there and we all will sit there and lay in bed and wonder, are we going to make this? Are we going to be able to do this? Is this something that we're capable of? Anything, uh, you know, and it's not just this. This is, this is the human side of our Messiah. Four, though Yahushua wielded the Ruach HaKodesh of Yahuwah and in him it was stored up as in a water tank, he still had to overcome the weakness of men, the weaknesses of men. For without so doing, his greatness could not be made manifest. Those who say he was something other than man detract from his greatness. For then the things he had to do would not have been easier to accomplish. Perhaps they cannot be comprehended, the heights to which men can rise when inspired by Yahuwah, the father of all men. Thoughts on this? Um, I mean, yeah, he died as a man. He, was a, he took the punishment of a man, and he felt what we felt. Yeah. And the, the, the line in this, those who say he was something other than man detract from his greatness. And I've often thought about this. I've often thought, you know, it is, this, it is the son of the most high. Did he have the same pain? Did he have the same tolerances? Did he have the same stuff as all of us? And it was, it's clear he was man. He, he came in the same, um, not even say brokenness, but in the same weaknesses that man has is what the son of the most high came in. Okay, five. Going into the temple, Yahushua stood up to read, as he had often done in, in holy days. He read out a passage from the scroll of a prophet to the Yehudim called, Yesi, called Yesi Yahu, in the tongue of his fathers, and having done so, returned it to the scroll keeper and sat down. After others had performed their duties, Yahushua had a chance to speak, and with all eyes upon him he did so, and the people were astonished. For he said, Behold, you are witnessing the fulfillment of the holy writ and the accomplishment of Yahuwah's design. I am chosen to be the tongue of the Father, speaking his words to you, his people. I am the light shining in the midst of the darkness. And even as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats, so do I come to show how the good are to be separated from the wicked. Yahushua spoke with knowledge, knowledgeable authority, bringing a new message which gladdened the hearts of those who heard him. The people marveled and whispered among themselves, where has he gained all this knowledge? How has he become so learned? Is this not the son of Yosef, the carpenter, who's now dead, and of Miriam? And do not his sisters live here still? Yet they say he has healed the incurable. But not all received his words in this manner, and many were offended. Noticing the murmuring among these, Yah Yahushua addressed them, saying, do you, know, do you hold it against me that I left? If a man has two duties, he must make a choice not following the inclinations of his heart, but the course indicated by a higher degree. No doubt you have heard about the things I have done elsewhere and will say, let us see you do the same here. To this I can answer with sincerity. A prophet is unacceptable in his own neighborhood, and a physician is not called to cure those who know him. When I come in friendship and compassion to those who need my help, they say, physician, heal yourself first, thinking me mad. Why should I, why now should I be called upon to do things Eliyahu and Eli, Eliasha could not do? The only ones they cured were Syrians. Yahushua did not heal many there. And he said, I heal in accord with the Torah and not against it. All right, anyone have anything at all for these last ones? So I guess well, he based everything upon the Torah. Yeah, he's uh, a, he heals people. So whatever yeah. it is, it's like whatever he, however he bases his healings, he bases it on the Torah. Yeah, absolutely. Like, I guess, how do you choose who is healed? He wasn't like healing he, his own people, like people he knew in his own town. He well, they were people. fighting him, right? They were fighting him. And and what was your question before that? How did he, you yeah, know, how, how did he decide who he It sounds like the people that were able to have their souls saved at some degree are the people that were healed. If it would make their unbelief or make their system even worse, then he, they didn't heal. And so that is, you know, something, again, that we've never, ever heard before other than in these things that not everybody was healed like this. Okay. All right. Let's, uh, after hearing what he said in the temple, many people were vexed with him and sought to hustle him out of town. But others said, let him be, for he grew up here and is the only son of a carpenter. Therefore, he tries to make himself important. He has been away and seeks to impress us. Being so poorly received in the town where he had been brought up, Yahushua went out around the villages, 
choosing 12 apostles from among his disciples. He sent them away in pairs to deal with many things caused by the intrusion of evil. He said to them, carry a staff, but take no food, no money, and no change of clothing. When you are invited to a house, stay there until you leave the village, but never tarry where you are not welcome. Is, uh, we, these are repeats, right? Yeah, we've, we've heard, we've this, heard this. Yahushua said, many will fail to grasp your meanings or will interpret your wrong, words wrongly. This is very, very important, guys. This, is, this, is, this verse right here is one of these ones I will apply to my life as of today, right? This is something I did not get until today. And so let me, let me read this slowly. Yahushua said, many will fail to grasp your meanings or will interpret your words wrongly. Do not dispute with them. But put things right with patience. Never disregard a questioner or abuse him, lest others think you have no answer. All can only grasp what you say according to their understanding. Therefore, speak plainly and to their hearts. And I will stop on this one here and, and talk about this a little bit because over, what, seven, eight years in, on YouTube, we have had pretty much every kind of question, every kind of attack, every kind of everything that is out there and it gets to the point where people will they'll laugh at you when you say don't eat pork or they you know they, they scoff at you and I am the very first to just be anymore I'm just done with it you know if people don't want to seek our creator I'm fine I, I'm done I don't argue with them anymore I don't do anything I used to I used to spend a tremendous amount of time but it's very very clear here that if you are abusing or if you do not answer the question right, you're the one at fault because the questions can be answered. And if the questions can be answered in patience, and even if that same question comes up to us hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times and everybody brings belligerence and everyone brings a little bit of spite and hate with it and they're laughing, <laughs> you keep the commands, <laughs> you know, that's where we, especially me, and I guess all of us have to become far more patient than what we are. And um, I don't know, 14 was just, a, it, it really hit home. 15, anyone have anything on that? Mm -mm. Anything? You guys understand? You guys, even even amongst your guys' selves, right? Don't dispute with people. Put things right with patience, right? That is, that is what we have a massive problem in this house with, is patience. Okay, 15. Yahushua himself went about proclaiming the advent of the rule of Elohim. And he also cured many kinds of sickness. Then people began to say, to say, this man is great and good even among those dedicated to the service of Elohim. And many heeded his teaching and led a new life. Now, many people believed there would be two kinds of deliverers, and a man named Yosef Barben had many followers. Yahushua met him at a house in Bethel and said, Why do you declare things which stir up the people? To which the other replied, What concern is it of yours? So this is very interesting, right? So this guy had a bunch of followers, Yo Yosef Barben, and he, uh, Messiah asked him, why do you declare things which stir up the people? And he said, what concern is it of yours? And I found this extremely interesting. Yahushua answered him after this manner. Several men were sitting in a boat and one began boring a hole beneath the seat. Seeing this, his companion said, what are you doing here? He answered, what concern is it of yours? What I do beneath my own seat? And they replied, surely it is our own affair when what you do will swamp the boat and we will all be thrown in the water. Thoughts? Um, basically, he says, don't drag us down with you. He's like, well, well, we all know what, what, what you're doing. Well, yeah, and, and that, that's the thing. And this guy was, was stirring up for the wrong way the people of Yah. And Messiah says, why are you doing this? And the guy says, it's no concern of you. But if you're doing something that is going to swamp the boat or you're doing something of danger to everyone else, then it, it is concern to everybody. 18. Yahushua moved to another place, and a crowd gathered around him. And while he was speaking, one of his followers tried to push through him. Now this man was deformed and ugly. His eyes squinted, and he was ungainly. But he walked in the light of truth. The crowd jostled him, shouting, Look at the ugly man! Push him back, or he will scare the teacher away! Then Yahushua stepped down from where he stood, and pushing through to the man, put an arm around his shoulders, greeting him affectionately. Yahushua said to the people, why mock someone in whom the light of goodness shines? What matters the appearance of the body when the ruach within is bright? None among you has a ruach such as this man's, beautifully glowing with goodness. Wow. So this gives us a lot of stuff. This, this talks a lot of stuff. Like if you are 
endowed with a Ruha Kakadesh. People can see that, right? Maybe not everybody, but Messiah could definitely see it. And we're talking about this guy that looks like Quasimodo. He has he's just a, a very ugly looking guy. Everybody's mocking this guy. Get away from him, Quasimodo. You're gonna scare the teacher. Get away, right? And this guy, do you think this is the first time he's ever heard this in his life? Probably, probably yeah, every day. Every single day, right? That's that's the barbaric nature of humans, is especially kids. Um, kids are uh, most kids are brutal when it comes to people that are different. Now this is amazing though. We we have somebody and, and Messiah goes down and gives this guy a hug, and that is the amazing power of hugs, and you know affection is that you know you can just put things into place. Twenty. This I say to you, the body is of little importance, for it perishes at its hour, but the ruach never dies. Why do you treasure that which you can keep but a short while? For soon it will be cast off like a worn out tunic. Surely it is better to treasure more lasting things. The shell of a pearl is ugly and rough, but men do seek it out for itself, wanting only what it contains. And this becomes the cherished treasure of a beautiful woman. Never heed the external ugliness. Seek for the beauty within. Okay, and again, it, it goes from this, the story of our little buddy, the Quasimodo, and it's going to what a pearl is, right? And you guys probably have zero here at this table, have no idea how pearls come about or any of this kind of stuff. But the outside of the pearl is super ugly. But the inside is what, you know, you give a, a set of pearls to a, a woman and she should, you know, she's just very, very happy with that whole thing. And so Messiah is talking about we need to celebrate people for people, not people for looks. We need to celebrate what is inside of the people and the hearts of the people and not for their faces, right? And that is that is the world we live in right now. It is a it is a sick world where they, you know, they they try to make everyone feel like they're ugly and you know, you got to put on makeup and you got to put on this and you got to fit in, you got to be super cool. But yet at the end of the day, it doesn't seem like any of that matters because um, you know, beauty is as they say is is it's skin deep. And uh, Messiah says seek for the beauty within. 21. In the crowd there was a man who employed many others and he said, "Master, I am so stirred up by your words that I will give everything I have and follow you. Yahushua said, How many look to you for food and for employment? The man replied, My children are numerous, and I have many servants, and there is my father who is old. Yahushua said, The lives of no two men are alike, and all require the labors of many to support them. Even the greatest teachings cannot satisfy empty stomachs. Therefore, return to the place of your appointed labors and remain constant in your responsibilities. Give all you make over your modest give all you make over your modest requirements to Yahuwah and study the holy books daily. Wow. Okay. Anyone want to take a stab at this? So basically what he said was that like this guy makes this guy is he's got money, right? He's got enough to have servants, he's got enough to have to feed all his servants, to feed his kids, to feed his dad who is old. And he's like, here's what you should do. Anything you make over, right? Anything that's basically profit for you, anything that basically after you've bought food, after you've you bought all this stuff for your servants. You pay them all. After all that, give what's left to Yahuwah. Basically, you would donate to the priest or give it to the poor. Basically, is what he would want him to do with it. And he's like, and basically, read read the books, right? Read the Torah, read, study that. He's like, that's how you can devote your life because Yahushua was saying that not everyone could just drop everything and become a disciple, right? Not everyone could just become a Peter. Not everyone could just become a John at that time. You'd be you'd be ruining your old man's life, right? The yeah, father, your too. father, your children wouldn't eat. You have all your servants. All of a sudden, if if you this is this is incredible. Because we have never, ever had this advice right here, right? A lot of it is drop everything and follow me. This particular instance was don't drop everything. Take care of it, it and take care of anything over in excess. You know, help those. And, and essentially, I mean, this is a the, the, the cycle of life is, is how to do this. This is amazing stuff. 24. Yahushua said, a man without the light places his faith in gold, burying it in the ground so it will support him in adversity. Yet what benefit does it bestow if he never needs it? He worries continually and it must be con constantly on guard, lest he be robbed. And when he dies, his inheritors spend it. Yet by charitable deeds and self-restraint, a greater treasure, which cannot be taken by robbers or dissipated by others, can be laid up openly and without fear. Okay, um, thoughts? Any on this? Anyone listen on this? Yeah. Okay, um, 
it's talking about, you know, the guy burying his money in the ground and you, you, you bury it and it's never secure. You're always worried about it. Somebody's going to come take your money and then you die and then somebody else essentially gets it. Um, that's why, like, that's why you can't have treasures on earth. That's basically what that is. I think it's yeah, and, and that's, that's the thing. Our, the most important thing that we ever have that we can battle for is our soul. And so without um, the, the, the money is going to be something that is going to take our souls, you know, it's going to hamper our soul for most of us. 25. Someone in the crowd said, great teacher, to some you say, give up all, while others you tell to continue in their ways. I have many responsibilities and a moderate surplus over my requirements. What should I do? Yahushua said, do what is right and just. Study the books of wisdom and live according to their teachings. Exploit no one and work for the rule of Elohim. A man said to Yahushua, Master, I know the problems of the rich, for I have sons and many friends. But how could I know whether they love me or my wealth? Yahushua said, A rich man owned a large warehouse, but one night this burned down, consuming all his wealth. And though he had given other warehouses to each of his two sons, when he lost his own, they would not help him. While poor, he met a beggar boy whom he adopted to fill the empty places in his heart. And going to a distant city, by hard work he established another warehouse, becoming rich again. When the adopted boy grew up, the man gave him a warehouse, but one much smaller than those he had previously given to his sons. The two sons heard about their father's new wealth and sent word that they wanted to combine their warehouses with his so that by trading together they could all get richer. The man then sent messengers to all three of those who had helped saying his business had declined and he was in the hands of money lenders and required a hundred pieces of gold to continue. The two sons returned excuses saying they could not help. But the adopted son sent 200 pieces of gold saying he had pledged himself to obtain it. Thus the man found out who loved him and left all his estate to the one he had adopted. All right, so who was the one, who was the one that loved him? The adopted, the adopted one. son. Yeah, the so adopted son. Basically in that he says... How do I know if I'm if I'm rich? How do I know people love me? How do I know it's not my wealth? He goes, well, when you're in your lowest, see who helps you, see yeah. who comes back for you, see which one sticks around, and the one person that uh, you help maybe out of love instead of out of wealth might actually come back and help you with love. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, um, this I think is the last chapter um, we are going to do, or verse right here. Speaking to the people about him, Yahushua said, "So as long as the great sun never shone upon earth, there was darkness." And had it not come to shine, there would still, there would be darkness still. Without the sun, men would not have known day from night. But when it came, both were made distinguishable. These times are a night of ignorance, wherein wrongdoing and bewilderment prevail. But a light has come to dispel darkness and make right distinguishable from wrong. Okay. How did that, what does this have to do with that previous thing? The 30 on this? Yeah. Um... Well, he's talking about him being the light, right? Speaking to the people, Yahushua said, so as long as this great sun never shone. I think there's a couple things, right? The, the point of this is without the sun, we would all live in darkness, right? Complete darkness. Without the sun, Messiah's sun, we would all live in complete darkness. We would not know exactly what was going on. Um, so as far as what that had to do with the last thing, I don't know exactly. Um, other than we, uh, it was breaking into the next thing and we need the sun and we need the sun and the son of, of the son of Yahuwah and the son of Yahuwah is what we need. Um, both of them. We need the created son and the, the man-made created son as well. Okay, so I guess that is it. Um, everybody, we thank you guys very, very much for listening in. If you're listening in, and um, we hope you guys have a wonderful week. We thank you all, and we love you all. All right, shalom. shalom.